Welcome to week two of Explore the Bible. We're continuing in the Gospel of Mark. Great gospel. I hope you're enjoying this study. We're in uh, the second part, the end of chapter one here. Read all of chapter one. It's going to help you as you get prepared for teaching uh, this week's lesson because there are things that have happened that we're just kind of going to pick up on the back end of as we start this passage. So glad that you're watching. If you haven't already yet, subscribe. Subscribe. Push the little subscribe button right down there. Like, comment, share it with other people. Appreciate it when you do that. And if you want to help support our teaching and mission work, you can go to give.exposedtochrist.com and you can uh, give there to help support what we're doing here. Let's dive into Mark chapter 1. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, he got up and went out and made his way to a deserted place. And there he was praying. Simon and his companions searched for him. And when they found him, they said, everyone is looking for you. And he said to them, well, let's go on to the neighboring villages so that I may preach there too. This is why I have come. Okay, so Jesus has done some miracles. He's done some teaching and then some miracles. And, you know, people have been coming and coming and coming, uh, wanting more and more things from him. And so this day, it says very early in the morning, while it's still dark, he gets up and he goes out to this deserted place. He finds a place alone and there he's praying. Okay, so he goes out early in the morning to get away from everybody else to have some time with the Lord. Now, Mark only records three times when Jesus prays. Each one of those times is at a key point in his ministry. It's not to say that he only prayed three times because we know his disciples came to him and said, teach us to pray. They clearly knew he was a praying man, right? But they... Mark only records these three times that I think are really important. And here at the beginning of his ministry, he's done all of these miracles and, and he's going out now to pray, to have some time away from people, right? So Simon, that's Peter and his uh, companions, they searched for him. This word searched actually has some kind of negative connotations to it. They are looking to find him. And I, you know, if we can read into this just a little bit, when they found him, they said, everyone is looking for you. And, and uh, I have a feeling it was not um, a very kind way. Jesus, where have you been? Everyone is looking for you. We're all trying to find you. Every, there are people coming. They want to find you. They want to talk to you. They want you to heal. They're coming to us. We don't know what to do. Everybody's been looking for you. What are you doing out here? You know, you can just picture that, can't you? That, they, that they're a little upset with him. Right? I mean... That's what happens, right? They're a little upset. And I want you to see what Jesus does. Jesus says to them, let's go to the neighboring villages. Let's go to the other villages so that I may preach, because this is why I have come. Now, the thing is that at this point, Jesus has a ministry that is growing fast, that is exciting, that's having lots of success in it. People are very drawn to it. They're wanting to, to come and be healed. They're wanting things from him. And his healing ministry has taken off. And yet Jesus, after spending time with the Lord, with the Father, he knows. That's not why I'm here. I'm here to preach the good news, to preach repentance, to preach forgiveness, to preach mercy from the Lord. If you'll give your life to him, that's what he's there for. The miracles are not, that's not the main function that he's there for. He says, I need to go here to these neighboring villages so that I may preach, not do miracles there, but preach there too, because this is why I've come. I love this, that Jesus resolved to do why, what he is there for is so strong. He's going to do what God has put him there for. And he's not going to be deterred. Not that, that the Miracles were a deterrent or weren't part of his mission, but they weren't the central part of his mission. And they could easily, as the disciples saw it, be the, the main function of what he was doing. But there was this teaching that had to occur too. And, and that, was the, that was the main point, right? The main reason that he was there. It was, uh, and to go to the other villages, not to just be in one place, but to go all over, right? For the world he came. So he went into all of Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and driving out demons. He's preaching, he's driving out demons, and then we have this. Then a man, so you, you get this picture of Mark hitting some highlights, right? Just telling some stories as we go. Not, not telling every, it's not a travelogue, it's not every little thing he did, but it, but it is some things that just struck him, right? 
or Peter, as he's being, as they're being related to him. Then a man with leprosy came to him and on his knees begged him, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Moved with compassion, Jesus reached out his hand and touched him. I am willing, he told him, be made clean. And immediately the leprosy left him and he was made clean. Okay. So this man with leprosy comes. Now, leprosy was common then, actually has become more common now somewhere in Florida, I think I've read, but leprosy comes. Now, a person with leprosy, it's interesting that, that leprosy is, is never talked about being healed. You're talked about being made clean because a person who is a leper because of this skin disease cannot be touched. They're ritually unclean. They can't go to the temple. They actually have to call out as people get near them. They're supposed to call out unclean, unclean, so that people know not to go near them, not to touch them, right? It's, if you touch a person who's leprosy, then you can't go to the temple. You have to go through a ritual cleansing process. So this man comes, and, and I love this. He says, if you're willing to the Lord, he says, you can make me clean. You can make me clean. Not you can heal me. You can make me clean. It's my favorite word in Greek that comes up next. Right here in verse 41, this moved with compassion is a Greek word. Just one word, splegnizomai. And splegnizomai literally means the turning over of the bowels or the, the guts are just turning over. It's, it's the hurt that a parent feels when they see their child hurting and there's nothing you can do for them. You see them going through something that they just have to go through and you're moved with compassion. You hurt, your your stomach is turning over inside because of pain. That's, that's what Jesus feels as he sees this man. And then look what happens. He reaches out and he touches him. He reaches out and he touches the man that you're not supposed to touch, he has a disease that, that you, you're not supposed to touch. He's got leprosy. He is unclean. And if you touch him, you're now unclean. But Jesus reaches out and touches him and says, I am willing, be clean. You know, just with the word, you see this in Jesus's miracles, the, the healings that he does, how many different ways he does it all the different methods and things. There's not just one way, it seems like. Right in here, he just speaks the word. You know why? Because Jesus is the Lord over the disease. The disease does not limit him. He is the one who tells the disease when to come and when to go. He's the one that allows the disease to show up, and he's the one who can make it leave when he desires to. And he just says, be made clean, and immediately that there's that word again. We'll see it, I think, almost every week. Immediately, the leprosy left him, and he was made clean. Then, this is interesting, right? We see this, I think it's the first time it shows up in the Gospel of Mark. Then he sternly warned him and sent him away at once. He warned him, right? See that you say nothing to anyone, but go and show yourself to the priest and offer what Moses commanded for your cleansing as a testimony to them that, don't tell anybody, just go see the priest that he needed to go through the ritual cleansing so that he could be back in the temple, made whole there in the temple. Yet he went out and began to proclaim it widely and to spread the news with the result that Jesus could no longer enter a town openly, but he was out in deserted places and they came to him from everywhere. Jesus has just got to stay now in the deserted places where we started. That's where he ends up. He's got to stay there now in the deserted places all the time because the people are just crowding around him too much when he goes into town. That's why he warned him. It wasn't that he didn't want him to talk to people. It wasn't that that uh, the man couldn't couldn't say anything to anybody but it was that Jesus was trying to protect this time because he had a purpose. His mission was to teach. But this man said, I need to be clean. And you know, he looked at it, I'm sure, just as um, the disease has made me unclean. The disease has affected me. But I know that Jesus looked at him and knew that the disease wasn't his greatest problem, that he needed to be made clean inside. He needed to have his sin washed away, right? And that's when we think about the work of God, that when he acts in our lives, that disease has no power over us, but certainly sin does not either. And, and when we come to Jesus, we can all be made clean. I hope that's helped as you study, as you prepare, uh, as you teach your class. God bless you for teaching. Thank you so much for doing that every week. 
and please subscribe if you haven't already subscribe to our channel like comment share it with others so they can watch as well show it in your classroom whatever you want to do uh, we're, we're glad that we can help you in any way that we can god bless you we will see you next week